I coordinate and manage the International Veterinary Vaccinology Network. Um, and so I thought it'd be good today to just to update everyone um, on the activities of the network so far. Um, so we launched in August last year um, after receiving 2.2 million pounds from the MRC and the BBSRC through the um, Global Challenges Research Fund. Um, the network is directed by our two directors who are shown here. So firstly, Tim Connolly, um, who's based here at Roslyn, and Brian, who's based down in Purbright. Um, we're also advised by a network management board, which consists of um, 10 international experts across the field of um, human and veterinary vaccinology. The aim of the network is to facilitate the formation of international collaborations um, in order to improve vaccine design and development for both livestock and zoonotic diseases in low and middle income countries. Um, and we will do this by bringing together individuals from across um, the fields of vaccinology, um, irrespective of pathogen or species of interest, with a, a really key aim of addressing bottlenecks that are preventing the development of veterinary vaccines um, at the moment. Um, so since we launched in August, um, we have welcomed 375 members from across 43 different countries, which are shown here. Um, and importantly, 56% of our members are from low and middle income countries. Um, there are many benefits to being a member of the network, um, some of which are shown here. Um, so firstly, you have access to potential collaborators um, from across veterinary and human vaccinology. Um, there are networking opportunities for our members um, in the form of annual conferences and also our members can apply to host workshops. Um, IVVM members are also eligible to apply for scholarships to attend our annual meetings. Um, we provide funding in the form of pump priming grants, which are up to £100,000 in value, and also lab exchange awards, which are £10,000 um, in value. And also members receive um, notification of news, events, training, funding opportunities and publications, um, both from ourselves, but also from the external um, veterinary vaccinology community. And we do this through our website, social media and also monthly newsletters. Um, so if you're not already a member of the network, um, please do have a look at our website and sign up. Um, so as Brian mentioned, um, we hosted our very first annual meeting in Nairobi at the end of March of this year. Um, so that brought together 115 delegates from across, across 23 different countries. Um, and the meeting was composed of talks um, from international experts on four key themes. So firstly, we looked at vaccines for zoonotic diseases. We then looked at veterinary vaccine production in Africa. We also had talks on synthetic biology and vaccine development and also livestock vaccines here and now. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have scholarship um, opportunities available for members to attend all of these meetings. Um, and we were able to award 27 scholarships for researchers from low and middle income countries to attend and 10 scholarships um, for early career researchers from the UK to attend this meeting. Um, and the full meeting report and all the presentations are available on our website, so if you are interested, please do have a look. Um, and excitingly, um, we are holding our second conference joint with the UK Veterinary Vaccinology Network, um, and this will be on the 9th and 10th of January in London, so please do save the date. Um, in addition to the um, annual scientific meetings, we also have workshop funding. Um, so our first workshop call was announced a week and a half ago um, and members can apply to host workshops on a specific topic of their choice um, and funding covers host costs, bursaries for attendees and also scholarships for ELMIC researchers to attend. Um, this first call is an open call and applications will be assessed upon submission. Um, the second thing that we will do is actually host our own workshops. So we held um, our very first workshop um, before the conference in Nairobi. Um, so this was a grant writing workshop. And all of the material from that workshop is available on the website as well. So please do have a look. And um, the last thing that we can do is that we can fund ELMIC researchers to attend external workshops that are occurring across the community. So we did this for a fish immunology workshop that was held recently. And we will have calls shortly for um, applications for attendees um, to go to the European Veterinary Immunology Workshop. 
and also the first um, meeting of the Comparative and Veterinary Immunology Group, which is in Purbury at the end of November. So we provide um, networking opportunities and then the second thing that we do is provide um, funding opportunities to really accelerate our members' um, vaccine research. So the first form of funding that we have um, is pump priming grants. Um, so these are up to £100,000 per project and they should be from collaborative teams of IVVM members and they should address a key bottleneck that's currently preventing the development of a veterinary vaccine. Um, so in October 2017, we had our very first call. Um, we had 18 applications and funded the three projects shown here. Um, so the first project is led by Kim Thompson at the Morden. Um, and as we've just heard, it's extremely important to have the correct tools in place to measure um, vaccine responses. So this project is developing tools um, for tilapia. Um, the second project is led by George Warnamway in um, Kenry in Kenya, and this is looking um, at the thermal st stabilisation of a Rift Valley fever vaccine. And the third project that we funded, which was um, the vaccine was nicely introduced earlier by Angie, um, this is led by Adrian Hill at the University of Oxford, um, looking at a T-solium vaccine. And our second call for pump priming grant applications is currently open, um, and the application deadline is the 2nd of July. We also have um, lab exchange awards. So these awards are up to £10,000 in value. And really these are to facilitate transfer of expertise between different labs um, across the international network um, or allow specialised um, pieces of work to be conducted by our members. Um, and these awards will cover transport and accommodation for the visiting researcher and consumables in the lab um, of a hosting researcher. And our first call for applications is closing shortly, so that's on the 1st of June. So in addition to um, providing networking opportunities and funding, um, we really want to be a central area um, for dissemination of relevant information to the vaccinology community. Um, so at the moment we do this through our website, which is just shown here. We're also on Twitter, so if you're on Twitter, please do follow us at InvetVacNet. And um, we also um, put together monthly newsletters which are sent out to all of our members. Um, and I really want to highlight the newsletter because it's a key opportunity for the community to send um, events that they're planning or publications um, to me. So you can just email this address here and I'd be happy to include it in one of our newsletters. Um, so we were awarded an additional £600,000 of funding um, in March and that was from the UK Government Industry Strategy Challenge Fund. Um, and the aim of that funding is to really um, strengthen our links with industry. Um, so we're doing that firstly by um, recruiting an industrial liaison officer. So this person will link academic and industrial IVVM members and they will also form a veterinary vaccinology information database um, which will detail the resources and different materials and partners working um, both in the UK and internationally. Um, we will also fund pump priming projects which have a strong industrial component or industrial partner and um, in addition to linking with industry we're also going to um, set up two other activities so firstly um, a vaccinology course so this will be very similar to the vaccinology in Africa course that's currently um, hosted by Brian and Adrian Hill um, but this will be in Asia instead of Africa and we will shortly have a call for fellowship applications for female researchers in low and middle income countries. So we're really hoping that um, by providing this form of funding that we can actively engage female researchers working in, in veterinary vaccinologies in these countries. Um, so we are one of five vaccine networks that were established at the same time. Um, so the other four networks are shown here. So firstly, we've got Validate, who are looking at complex intracellular pathogens. We've got HECVAC, um, which is the Human Infection Challenge Network, um, Back to Back, which is looking at bacterial vaccines, and lastly, Imprint, um, that are looking at vaccines for pregnant women and infants. So all of these networks, similar to the IVVN, have funding opportunities and they have networking opportunities. So please do have a look at all of their websites um, and sign up to be a member. So I hope you'll all agree that it's uh, an exciting time at the moment for the IVVN and that there are lots of opportunities for our members. So if you're not um, already a member, please do sign up on our website. 
Um, I'd just like to thank everyone um, on this list, um, particularly Tim and Brian, um, and also a massive thank you to Madeline who coordinates the UK Veterinary Vaccinology Network. Um, her work and Brian's work have really um, provided an excellent foundation for the IVVN going forward. Thanks. Great. Thanks very much, Charlie. Um,